Hello there guys and welcome to the Flight Simulator podcast. Today I am joined by Doofa911. Hello, hello. Um, if you're from his channel, welcome to my channel. Um, I know he said he was going to do a, a little video sort of promoting this, um, who's in it. Um, so welcome, hope you enjoy. Um, and if you're from my channel, this is Doofa911. He makes um, great flight simulator videos, you should definitely go check him out. There'll be a link down in the description. Um, now today we are going to be talking about, um, well, many different things to do with flight simulation basically. We've got some notes, we're just going to talk for 30 minutes, I'm just going to remember to check the time to make sure we don't run this on for 6 hours. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, is there anything you want to add? Uh, no, I'm just ready to, ready to go, we've got some interesting things that we're going to talk about, so yeah, I'm interested to see... Uh, what we think about them. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, what I um, thought we'd uh, bring up here, we've got notes each, and um, I'm just going to read the first thing on the notes list, um, yeah. is what we specifically each use um, flight sim the Flight Simulator platform, which, well, for you, it's Microsoft Flight Simulator Steam. Yeah. Steam okay. Edition, yep. yeah. And for me, it's P3D, which they're, at their core, they're the same, basically, just P3D is a bit more tweaks and stuff. It's it, they're basically the same. Yeah. Um, but we use them for like completely different things. Like um, you do like VFR flying. Yeah, I do a lot of um, sort of light aircraft and general aviation flying. Um, and predominantly, most of my time in flight simulator at the moment is being put towards making my videos. So, um, and just kind of helping helping people who are getting started in flight simulator really. Yeah, but whereas I um I tend to fly more large airliners, uh, doing like real world, uh, big routes from big airports and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I think the great thing about flight simulator is it can cater well for both of them things. Definitely, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's it's. I think it's such a versatile game that, yeah, you can like use it to, to just. You know, for a bit of fun, for just you know relaxing and kind of getting the sense of flying. Yeah. Um, which is kind of like my kind of what I try to focus on. But then, like what you focus on, if you want to learn like specifically how to fly like complex aircraft and understand the ins and outs of complex aircraft, like seven three sevens or uh, Air Airbus A three one nines, then then yeah, like you you can focus on um, sort of the larger aircraft and understanding how those all work so it's yes. I really uh, I really think that is you know it's a versatile game and you know you're you kind of you know you can take it as far as your you know imagination allows really with yeah. all the mods which are available yeah you, you can be like you can just like mess about in some aerobatic aircraft or you can be full realistic flying at Concorde which is yeah definitely I, I, I've never flown Concorde but I'm told it's incredibly difficult to fly Imagine it would be, yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, is um, is there is there anything like uh, you in the future you're planning to use Flight Simulator for? Is there any? Um, I'd love to try and move up to a like a twin engine turboprop aircraft. Um, because I'm not going to be, oh, well, I don't intend to be flying GA aircraft all the time. So, um, hopefully, as you know. Because anyone who's sort of seen my my videos and stuff, you know, I'm trying to go from being a complete beginner up to someone who's competent to to be able to fly jets. So, the next kind of logical step from moving on from GA aircraft would be a small twin twin engine prop. So um, I've been looking at some of the uh, the payware aircraft for that. Um, things like the uh, Majestic Dash Eight. The um, I'm not sure which company does it, but the uh, Twin Otter. Uh, as yeah, well. Aerosoft Twin Otter X. Aerosoft, yeah, yes. um, for a little island hopping and stuff. So, mm. so that I might kind of start pushing into to those kind of things. Uh, but that said, I've taken a real interest in flying gliders recently. So, oh, yeah. um, um, I might do a video or two on on gliding. So, um, oh. we'll see. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be um, kind of more kind of trying to keep things basic and also. Uh, I might start doing some videos on some kind of general aviation kind of concept as well, like um, 
you know the forces acting on the plane during flights and things like that not nothing like you know more kind of general aviation topics yeah yeah well, well um for me i want to get um to, to flying the airliners like for example the pmdg 737 ngx um like as realistically as possible like how they are flown in the real world yeah so all the checks and everything um, I also want to. Uh, I mean, I've got the PMD to triple seven. Um, I haven't properly got into doing long haul yet. Um, I mean, I can fly it, but I need to learn it a bit more. Yeah. Um, and I also, I, I also want to try and do um, a bit more small GA aircraft stuff. Like I bought the um, Cessna one eight two. Sorry, the Cessna one seven two uh, by. Eightway, that's the company I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, which I believe you also have, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, I bought that to try and get into it because it's really study level. So. Yeah. No, it's just really good fun. It's it. <clears throat> although, like one word of warning, it handles so much differently compared to the default Cessna yeah. in the game, yeah. um, and it really kind of catches you off guard <laughs> the first time you fly it. But. Um, mm. But yeah, like it, it's got that kind of level of detail that you'd be looking for um, when. You know, with your PMDG aircraft, it's just sort of the same level of detail, so mm. it's it's really good fun to fly. Yeah, I, I have flown it. I have um, I have had some flights around in it. I just haven't done fully realistic flights. Yeah, yeah I've just done some quick ones. Um, but yeah, um, so if that's okay, yeah, I'll move on to the next uh, topic. Yep. Uh, which was sort of add-ons and settings. Is there any add-ons or settings like? Well, is there any add-ons you couldn't sort of fly without it would be horrible to fly without um, and if not is there like, any settings that you think are really good ones to have in flight sim um, well I'm not running any um, add-ons at the moment because I've recently upgraded from really? the, the old box version of F6 to the uh, Steam edition so I haven't really had a chance to install things yet I'm just making sure the game is running smoothly but um, I think if there was one add-on that I use, or I used to use, which is essential, would be Real Environment Extreme. Oh, yeah. Because it just makes sort of the weather and like the atmospheric effects so much more realistic. Um, you know, you get that kind of haze off in the distance, which is sort of very realistic. Um, you know, obviously clouds are, are a big thing. Yeah. Are you, Real Environment Extreme. Are you using a Rex 4 Texture Direct? <coughs> Um, no, I was. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Let me try and find it for you quickly. Yeah, because um, I, I I use Rex for texture right and Rex soft clouds. I mean the Rex soft clouds. I mean that that's. I, I mean well, I'm not sure about that add actually. I mean the clouds look phenomenal. They look amazing, and for the price, it's great. But I ever since I've installed it, I've been noticing that I get OOMs. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it stands for out of memory error. Um. Basically, because Flight Simulator is a 32-bit uh, program, if you if you load too much in, it crashes it, and um, and I've noticed I've been getting that since I've had the Rex Clouds, uh, Rex Soft Clouds. So I might do some experiments to see if um, uninstalling them makes makes it better. Yeah, it may do. Um, yeah, it's Rex Essentials for with Overdrive that I've got, so it's got like the HD um, textures in it. Oh, yeah. um, I actually have that. <laughs> I have Rex for texture right, direct. But. Oh, okay, um, and yeah, other than that, because I'm I'm doing a lot of GA um, sort of flighting. Um, I'm, uh, most of my add-ons kind of focus on scenery, so I had hmm. also had Ultimate Terrain X, which just gives the land. Um, like gives the like the mesh like the three D kind of shape of the land more definition, yeah. um, and also I had ground environment and extreme which gives you better textures, and it makes things like it makes um, you know road placement placement much more accurate. So if there's a road somewhere in real life, uh, ground environment X will kind of put the roads there in the game as well. Yeah. Um, and also does other things like just accurate kind of river and, and town and city placements and that. So. Mm. Um, um, well, the thing is, when when you're doing uh, VFR stuff, you you, <coughs> need, you need like okay scenery, don't you? Because you're yeah. flying on the scenery. Whereas when you're flying on airliners, and even IFR in GA aircraft, you um, 
the scenery isn't that important. Important. It's well, it's important if you want it to look good, but it's not necessary for the flying. No, exactly. Yeah, like <clears throat> yeah, VFR flying. You you're heavily relying on what you can see, sort of out of the uh, out of the cockpit, and obviously, you know, when you can see you know detailed ground, you know, it makes it much easier to to navigate. Yes. Um. So yeah, I there there are a few add-ons that I couldn't. <coughs> Fly without. Um, I think the biggest is Easy Dock. I I don't understand how people get on without Easy Dock. Yeah. It's like when when you um I don't know if people watching uh, know, but I told you yesterday you yesterday. Um, I recently got a new computer. Well, I said recently about a month ago, got a new computer. Um, and I had to transfer. Well, I I had to install my prepared to it and everything and all my add-ons. And for some reason, I couldn't get Easy Dock working. And I, I went, I, I, for a week, I just refused to fly because I was trying to get Easy Dock to work. <laughs> I was like, no, I, I can't do it without Easy Dock. I need it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think that's definitely going to be my next purchase as Easy Dock. I became quite reliant on it. Um, uh, what other add-ons? Um, Active Sky. Yeah, I quite like Active Sky. I mean, it, it gives you a nice haze in the distance. Um, I know you were saying like Rex can give you that. Um, back to Sky also gives you it, I think. Um, yeah. And it does real world uh, weather and it, may, it makes the weather a lot better, basically. Um, that with Rex Soft Clowns looks amazing, I find. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about Active Sky Next. And yeah, Active Sky Next. Is yeah. Very good. Um, I Well, this isn't really an add on, actually. It's more of a completely separate program. Uh, that's not necessary, but I find it. Quite handy. Um, Navigraph. Yeah. Oh yeah. Navigraph charts. I have yes. Yeah, because basically we you can go onto Google and you can go like for example Heathrow Airport charts. You can just type that in and bring charts up from a website. But it's a lot easier to have them all in one place and they're all of they're all updated and they're all of a good quality and realistic and everything. So I I don't know for like five pound a month I pay for that. It's a monthly thing. Um, and I get FMC data as well, or FMS data. Yeah, no, I mean, I've I've heard, yeah, I heard that a lot of people who fly, you know, like airliners regularly, yeah, use Navigraph. And, yeah. And obviously, if, yeah, you're kind of reliant on on having like up to date, um, Airac data and and mm. that, you know for your FMC and that. So. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I have a lot of um Orbex, um add-ons. I. They're not necessary, I don't find. They make it look better. Um, like I have one called Precipit FX as well, that makes it look better. But they're not necessary, but I like having them. Um, mm. um, and yeah, I'm not. Well, and for me, I need a decent add on aircraft. Like default aircraft, they just. But I, I tried, I had to go flying a uh, default aircraft a few weeks ago, and I was just like, no. I yeah. Can't, can't go back to this. Um, so yeah, I, I find a uh, default aircraft just sort of like necessary now. Uh, not sorry, add-on aircraft necessary, decent ones. Um, the the if you're actually starting out on airliners, the best one to go for I'd say is the Aerosoft Airbus X. I mean, you can just jump straight into the PMDG 737 NGX, but it is it's a steep learning curve, and you don't want to be. If it's like your first first time you've ever flown an airliner in flight simulator, like with an FMS, you don't want to be flying the NGX. I wouldn't say. I mean, I learned on the NGX, but I'm gonna be a bit it's hypocritical. But I, yeah, I, I'd recommend starting on the Airbus if anybody watching. Uh, am I right in thinking that Airbuses are sort of generally easier to fly than Boeing's? Yeah, that's that's what I mean. They're they're a lot simpler. A lot they're a lot more automated. And the Aerosoft right. one has this um, check it, checklist thing. I think um, I've seen it before, yeah. Yeah, where it sort of does something automatically for you. Oh. I think the Twin Otter has a similar thing. So okay. if you're starting out on sort of twin prop, then Twin Otter maybe you're the one to go to. But um, uh, yeah. Uh, so is there anything, any sort of anything, any settings you use? Um, not really. I'm fortunate enough that I've got um, a strong enough PC that I can run everything at maxed. 
Oh, yeah. uh, the only kind of caveat to that is that I'm still running FSX in DirectX 9 because um, I've tried getting Steam Edition running in DirectX 10 and I found that a lot of um, sort of textures at airports were glitching um, for some reason like the taxiways when they joined up to the runways were like kind of glitching and flickering through the runways um, and and that was just like really off off-putting and um, oh, so I've just realized I'm not because I've been trying a lot of freeware airports actually on prepared and I think prepared by default is in DirectX 10 right and a lot of the freeware scenery just don't work like if you um, watched my I don't know if you did but I don't people watching if anybody watched my um Svalbard video, you notice the taxiway was a bit glitched out, I don't know if I mentioned that, I think I did um, and that must have been why then Yeah, I, I, I think it's um, a common issue and some people have said that they've resolved it by um, I think turning on anti-aliasing or turning it off or doing something with filter settings but I tried every combination and it wasn't working for me so hmm. I've just reverted back to DirectX or having um, FSX set to DirectX 9 yeah. Um, it seems. Yeah, that seems to kind of be the only way around it. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, but I, I um, a part of, I, cause I've got all back to FTX Global, and that um, re it sort of redoes a lot of the airports, the default airports, makes them a bit nicer. So they're still like default textures and everything, but they're a little nicer. Right. Um, that's what I find. Um, anything to add? Um, nothing on the uh, the add-on funds. The only um, kind of add-on payware aircraft that I'm using at the moment is the A2A Cessna 172, um, because it's you know a very high quality GA aircraft, and it's um, it's just so much more um, immersive, and you have to be so much more um, active with it than the default um, Cessna 172. So. Mm. Um, if anyone wants a, a decent GA aircraft, then I'd recommend you know having a look at that one. Yeah, the A to A. Yeah, they're 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 very well known for their um, GA aircraft and also oh, yeah. some um, some older aircraft as well. So, um, you know, I'd I'd recommend giving them a look. Yes, um, I probably will do f uh, future videos on the A to A Cessna one seven two. Um, I mean, I mean, this is just sort of like a. Uh, <laughs> the thing like if you if anything we've mentioned here like in the add-ons that we've mentioned you want to ever see me do videos on just just put it in the comments and I probably will do it um, yeah so or any requests or anything um, another thing uh, freeware do you use much freeware um, I don't have any I don't think no um, I know that there are some very good um, websites out there which offer a lot of freeware um, mm. and I used to like years and a few years ago I used to to fly with a lot of freeware aircraft but um, I don't so much anymore um, yeah, there's a uh, great a great uh, website I think it's called uh, Riku uh, dot com or something um, it offers it offers like great freeware and they put them into installers for you so you don't have to add it to libraries and everything you just run the installer simply and well, that's very handy then. Yeah, it's added to scenery library and everything like that. Um, it's yeah, that I'll put a link in the description to that. It's they do some really decent freeware there. They don't make the freeware, um, they just sort of distribute it. Um, right. Yeah, I, I would recommend that site. I'll yeah, I'll link that in the description. Um, but as as for freeware, I, I I use some like um, if you're again if you watch the Oslo to Svalbard video. Um, the Svalbard scenery was freeware. That and that was pretty good. It had um, different runway textures and everything. Although I was a bit annoyed, right? Because a week after I'd made that video, okay, oh no, two weeks after I'd made the video, um, Aerosoft released their Svalbard scenery. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, so I could have just used that. But rip, yeah. Um, just having a look here, I think the website that I used to use was. Uh, simviation.com. Um, yeah. I'll send you like the URL afterwards, but uh, yeah, that I th that's right. think that's the uh, the one that I used to use quite a lot. So, mm. um, and you can find all sorts. There. You can find aircraft. You can find like a lot of re like aircraft kind of repaints as well. So, yes. um, it's definitely worth a, worth a look there. Yeah. 
I remember that. Um, uh, so yeah, let's uh, move on to the third topic. Uh, yep. Any tips on people how, how people can improve their simulators so they've just sort of set up flight sim and what can they do to improve um, their thing? Like I, I, well, what I would suggest, and I think you would as well, because of the video you did, is uh, tweaking your config. Yeah, so um, yeah, it takes a little bit of time and it's a bit of faffing about, but yeah, if you tweak, you can tweak the game and just make sure that it's running smoothly. I think that's the the essential thing with FSX is to make sure that it runs smoothly in all conditions. Mm. Um, I mean, that would be a, a kind of a key key factor because it's quite an old game now, so it does even even with on powerful computers, it can struggle. Um, Simply because it's it you know it was it's about ten years old now FSX so it wasn't designed to to run on sort of the technology we have available nowadays. Yeah. Um, so it does it does take a little bit of kind of tweaking and, and getting it, but um, you know once you get it running smoothly, then you shouldn't have to to ever change the settings again. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean from there it's just a case of you know just. You know, remember it's you know it's a it's a game. It's meant to be fun, so don't you know don't take it too seriously. Don't get too hung up on on doing anything. Yeah, um, there, there, there's actually if you um if you don't really know the sort of how to properly tweak it like manually, uh, there's actually a really good website. I'll um, leak it. Oh, I'll leak it. No, link it <laughs> uh, down below. Um, where you upload your config, uh, you put a few settings like you say like how many calls. CPU cores you've got and stuff like that, um, and it tweaks it for you. Um, I don't think it is it's as good as doing it manually because manually you put a tweak in and then test it and see if you get a better frame rate, and it can't do that obviously. Um, but it's a lot simpler, definitely. Yeah, no. If if you if you don't have the time or you're not you know confident in going in and changing settings yourself, then yeah, definitely use that website and, mm. and it kind of does it all for you. Oh yeah, and by the way, I should mention them. Um, don't anybody be worried about breaking their FSX config file because if you just delete it and start flight simulator, it will just create a new one. Yeah, fresh one. It's fine. Um, I mean, you can back it up if you want, but you don't need to because um, you'll you'll need to configure all your settings again. But um, yes, um, another thing I um, like I, I see people doing. It, well, not many people, but. People using flight simulator without a joystick. Like I don't understand how people do that. Yeah, I I, I, I can't mean, imagine ever flying without at, at the very least a joystick. Um, yeah, it's kind of essential, really. Yeah, I mean, what what do you what what joystick do you use? Um, it's just it's a really old thing now. It's a Logitech um, Extreme 3D Pro. Oh, um, yeah. It's quite an old one, but it was like really cheap. It was only about twenty quid. Um, and and yeah, it's you know it does the job perfectly mm. um i mean obviously i'd love to have um like a hotas setup where you've got a joystick and a separate throttle kind of yeah. thing I, i'm i'm, I'm got... say go ahead oh sorry i was going to say they both have like lots of switches on them so they're both like you know very so you, you can access a lot of the um controls from from just like these two from the throttle and also the joystick mm. um but yeah i mean even if you've just got a very very basic you know, basically just a base and a stick. You know, it will still give you more um, more control than you know using a keyboard or a mouse. Yeah, I, I mean, I um, if you're looking for a joystick on a budget, um, one one that I would recommend is the Speedlink Black Widow. It's extremely nice. It's got a full um, throttle, uh, like big throttle. It's not like you know you see like where they've got little sliders. I mean, I, I'm not sure what yours has. Does your have a little slider. Yeah, it's just like a tiny little kind of rotating. Yeah, well, well this, this thing, the um, it, it's like thirty pound, and it's like a proper full um, joystick with a full throttle. Um, and instead of being, you know, how a lot of them are twisty to for your rudder. Yes. Um, well, this one has like little things you push down on the back of the throttle. Oh right, okay. Uh, they they work. Um, it works okay. It's not brilliant. I mean, I don't use it anymore. I use a set of um, Cytec Pro Flight rudder pedals. Um, but yes, uh, I would really recommend that. And it's got this sort of like rubber feeling to everything, so it feels a bit sturdy. It doesn't feel that cheap. Uh, so that's that's what I would recommend if you're on a budget. 
Um, if you're not on a budget, um, <laughs> warthog. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, sa I'm saving for a warthog at the moment. Uh, I used to use the SciTech Pro Flight yoke, but it, it just I got sick of just taking it on and off all the time and off the desk and stuff. Yeah. Um, no, I, th I think yeah, you you need to be a really kind of hardcore flight simmer to to have like a full like yoke and pedal setup. Yeah. Um, I think pedals, even if you've got a joystick, I think pedals are definitely you know worth thinking about because you know it gives you just that rudder control much better, but. Um, yeah, I think yeah, you need to be like a really serious flight simmer to to you know purchase a a yoke. As yeah, well. I use the Pro Flight pedals, although I'm told that the uh, Pro Flight uh, Combat rudder pedals they're not too much more, and I'm told they're a lot better. So if you're getting rudder pedals, um, anything, then um, I w I'd recommend go paying a little bit more and getting them, even though I haven't used them, but I've heard they're better. So. <laughs> Yeah, but I already bought these Pro Flight ones, and I'm not about to go out and spend another hundred and twenty or whatever on the combat yeah. ones. Even better. Yeah, you need to save up for them, don't you? Yeah. Um, the thing is, well, with my pedals, um, the problem is my feet are a bit jammed under the desk because the sort of the width of my desk, like from the wall to the edge of the desk, isn't that um, much, so. Right. That's the only problem I have with rudder pedals, um, uh, but yeah, I, I would recommend them. I'd, I'd recommend getting a decent joystick before you get them, though. Like, prioritize a decent yeah, joystick. Yeah, no, joy joystick is definitely definitely mm. a must. Um, uh, so yes, and the final uh, topic I've got on my little um, notepad document here um, is what do we hope to see in the future of um, flight simulation? Um, and also talking about uh, May, uh, the dovetail flight simulator thing they're developing. Yeah, well, I saw, um, was it recently, was it Fugo right. Sim released a video um, saying that there's a few more kind of flight simulators coming out, um, which are very interesting. But I think they were more... Um, gamey ones. Yeah, they were more gamey. Like, there was one based on, uh, what was it, the Red Bull Air Race? Is. Which looked very nice, I must say, but yeah, that's obviously stuff. that's that's quite a kind of a, a niche area of um, of you know flying, um, and also yeah, there's I think there was one one or two based on um, like military sims as well. Yes. Um, uh, with regard to the dovetail one, so yeah, dovetail I think are like they've got the kind of license to FSX at the moment. Yes. Um, and they're developing a new flight simulator. Um, I'm a bit hesitant about about it. Yeah, um, I am, because it said it was based on Microsoft Flight. Yes. But I don't know if that means they're just going to use the engine from it and make it completely sort of global. So, like, you, know, you, you can fly anywhere on the planet and there's loads of different planes and stuff. Or yeah. if it means it's going to be doing missions around a specific area of the US, which I never Well, no, well, no, Dovetail actually. Dovetail's a, a UK company, so it's probably the UK. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, though, I mean, like FSX is is you know built up like quite a legacy now, hmm. because you you see all these new new games which are something simulator and they're all completely rubbish, you know. Yeah. To to put it nicely. But, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator is, you know, a simulator in the kind of truer sense of the word. And, you know, Dovetail have got a huge opportunity to really bring that kind of technology and that game into the twenty first century. But um yeah, judging by you know, I had a quick look before we started this at their sort of train simulator on um, on Steam, yes. and yeah, the the reviews on that were mixed, to put it <laughs> in Steam's own terms. Yeah. And I had a look also at the DLC which was available, and this is the most concerning thing. And Train Simulator 2015 has over three thousand pounds worth of DLC. Yeah, I know, I know. That's... And it's crazy. Like, yeah, as I said, they've got a massive opportunity to like develop, yeah, flight sim. But I, I fear that 
if if it's going to be anything like Train Simulator, like you say, they may have a limited area to kind of fly in to begin with, and then they'll charge stupid amounts of money to give you add-ons or you know aircraft or anything. So yeah, what what I want them to do, right? This would be the perfect scenario. Build it, give it a decent engine, right? So decent sort of more open source engine I'd say so it's not all secure looked in so mm -hmm. people can modify it slightly yeah. um, a decent flight model uh, d decent sort of aerodynamic modelling uh, a bit like X-Plane has I can't remember what they call it but it's different to how FSX's works yeah it's, it's more realistic um, build some but build global scenery so give it global scenery sort of off the, from the start but mm -hmm. not really it doesn't have to be really high detailed global scenery um and give it some give it a few um like one of each different type of aircraft so for example um a, a simple cessna a simple tw uh, twin prop aircraft uh, and an airliner maybe and then make give it the the most sort of the, a really easy to use and really extensive scenery builder so people can build airports quite simply and people can build global scenery quite easily yep and that that would just be superb like make, get, get get it so simple and easy to use that if someone knows how to use a 3d a 3d program and um photoshop and stuff like that they can basically in a few hours or so they can build a reasonably high definition um, airport. Yeah. That and, yeah. And create a global, a create, create a um, like an all, a database where people can upload stuff. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, yeah. And make it really easy for developers to make add-on aircraft with flight management computers. Yeah, that that's one of the things I was hoping is that yeah they make it kind of or they they give kind of like the yeah like tools or kind of modding tools available for people to use. And make it a bit more open because I mean that's one of the things that's kept FSX alive is you know the the flight sim community you know developing planes and developing scenery for it and stuff. Um, nice. But yeah, I mean yeah, like given how Dovetail operates, you know I've got a fear that um, you know they they kind of they try and earn a lot of their money through DLC and stuff. So yeah. Um, you know, as I said, they, they, I think that they've got a, a massive opportunity on their hands, um, and hopefully, yeah, they kind of go down the model where they maybe release the, the the base, like they put, they make a really good kind of base game, and maybe release it for more money and then sell cheap add-ons. But yeah, you know, given given how Train Simulator looks, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and I think Dovetail, Dovetail need to admit. That there are people that are better know more about making flight simulator scenery, like airport scenery and stuff, yeah. than them. So they should approach Aerosoft, they should approach Orbex, they should approach um, UK two thousand and say, while we're developing this, do you want do, do you want to sort of um, know how to make the scenery so you can make some decent sceneries from the areas that you cover? Um, for the flight simulator that can be released um, pretty soon to when the flight simulator comes out, if not on release day. Yeah. That that would be great, and and also approach adult uh, aircraft adult like PMDG. I, yeah. I bet if they went up to PMDG and said, "Do you we're releasing this in a, in I don't know two years maybe because I well I think it's going to be next year they're releasing it, but they might delay it or anything. I, I, I'm not sure." But say if they want to PMDG and said we're releasing this in two years, right? Here's sort of well not all of the source code, but here's all the code you need to make a full detailed add-on aircraft. You you can have I don't know this amount of money. They'll give them a bit of money to boost them um, to make your 737 NGX as realistic as you have it now, but make it for our new simulator. Um, and then we can also sell that through our Steam store. Uh, do you want to do it? I bet PMDG will go. Yes, of course we want to do it. Yeah, I think yeah. Obviously, anything that would give you know uh, an external company like that that does scenery or does aircraft, 
um, if they've got an opportunity to sell more of their own products, then yeah, they would, they would definitely jump at the chance. Yeah, and especially um, if especially if Dovetail with all their train simulator money, um, <laughs> they use some of their train simulator money to give um, to give PMDG a bit of a financial boost. I think that would work. Yeah, because I mean, because obviously P- PMDG to get the level of detail in their aircraft like they obviously need to go to you know Boeing and like use Boeing's probably you know or probably speak to Boeing's official own simulator teams yeah. and and speak to them and kind of and obviously get get their hands on an actual Boeing aircraft and all the technical documentation for it to discover how all of the sort of the systems within an aircraft work like the electrical system the hydraulics and pneumatics and all that so yeah. Um, and obviously that that take that probably cost them a lot of money, I would imagine. So yeah, and P and G already have their foot in the door, don't they? Exactly. Yeah, I mean they're already you know they're well, you know for people who who have been searching add-ons and you know understand like the flight community will know that P M D G are one of yeah the the biggest kind of names in add-ons yes. for F S X and yes. prepared and that so. Mm. Um, so so basically what what I'm saying is. Um, Go approach these add-on makers to make your uh, high-detailed add-ons, rather than you attempting them, who have never done it before, and make us a decent scenery builder. Yeah, that's that's basically what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I, that's all the topics done, and um, we've been recording for 37 minutes now. Um, so that's a bit longer than I intended, but it's okay. No it's, it's been okay. We've had a nice time. Um, yep. So I'm not sure if we're going to do any more of them, uh, more of these. I mean, I've enjoyed doing this, haven't you? Yep. No, it's been good fun. Good yeah, to so, get a feel for what other uh, flight simulators think. Yeah, we we could do more of this. Um, I don't know. Maybe on your channel, or if you want to just stay on my channel, we could do that. Um, uh, yeah. So any everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please do um, remember to like. Um, and if you want to see more of my content, do check it out. And if you like it, do subscribe. Um, if you're from uh, Doofus channel here, um, then then I I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, welcome to my channel. Um, and if you're from my channel before, <laughs> then um, go uh, check out um, this the guy do for nine one one because um, he makes great videos that are very informative. Um, so yes, well, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Bye see you later, guys. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.